unhealthy tissue should be removed from the wound bed for healing to continue and reactivate the healing cascade. Only dry, stable eschars should be left in place. This technique is known as debridement, and there are several methods. Autolytic debridement does not require any additional steps as it utilizes the natural chemicals released into the wound to break down non-viable tissue. The keys are to choose a dressing type that maintains an ideal, moist wound healing environment and monitor for wound infection. However, this is the slowest form of debridement and it is not augmented in any other way. Biologic debridement utilizes maggots or larvae grown in the laboratory to ingest both devitalized tissue as well as bacteria. A dressing is applied to make sure that the organisms do not move out of the wound bed. Talk with the patient before using this method as they may not be comfortable with it, but studies support it as an effective option. Enzymatic debridement involves the application of a commercially formulated enzyme, such as collagenase, into the wound bed. It removes non-viable tissue and does not harm healthy tissue. To get the most benefit, know the half-life of the product so that reapplication can be timed appropriately. Also, follow the manufacturer's instructions as chemicals in some cleansers or dressings may inactivate the enzyme. This method may also be cost prohibitive depending on the patient's insurance coverage, but it can be an important option for those patients who cannot tolerate sharp debridement. Sharp or excisional debridement involves the use of a tool such as scalpel or a curette. It is important to treat the patient with adequate pain control prior to the procedure and after if needed. For larger wounds, this might best be done in an operating or procedural room to allow for the use of anesthesia. The goal is to reach healthy, bleeding granulation tissue. Adequate hemostasis post-procedure is essential. Mechanical debridement is not a preferred method as it can remove both unhealthy and healthy tissue from the wound bed. The historical technique used to achieve this was wet to dry dressing changes. Gauze soaked in saline or an antimicrobial solution was packed into a wound bed and then covered with the dry dressing. When the solution had evaporated, usually 12 to 24 hours later, the gauze was pulled from the wound bed and tissue stuck to it would be removed as well. However, studies have shown that this was very painful and not effective. Often, to reduce the patient's pain, the gauze was re soaked, which reduced the amount of tissue removed. More advanced options such as pulsatile lavage and ultrasound have been developed. In pulsatile lavage, a solution is used to cleanse the wound bed under a pressurized system. The solution may be antimicrobial or saline, depending on the manufacturer's recommendations. The higher the pressure, the greater the rate of removal, but also the risk of increasing the patient's pain. Some devices allow the pressure to be modified. It is generally recommended not to go higher than 15 PSI with the best rate of removal in the 8 to 12 PSI range. This method can be limited by the location of the patient as special equipment is needed and can be messy because of the pressure of the lavage. During the treatment of a wound, different types of debridement may be used in combination, such as enzymatic debridement after an excision if all the non-viable tissue could not be removed, or as the wound or treatment location changes, so too might the technique used. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.